Hello everybody, it's Whiskey11 and welcome back to the Gaming Lounge. And it is time for us to go over the USS Clemson in our How to Play series on the US Destroyer Lines. And the Clemson is, without a doubt, one of the most brutal Tier 4 destroyers in the game. Easily, easily one of the most fun and, in my opinion, the best at Tier 4. Hard to beat. Let's talk about why. And to do that, we're going to cover the main armament and all of our stats first. So we do have 10,900 hit points, which is quite a lot, actually, for this tier. Uh, pretty good. Uh, wouldn't count on armor for anything, but, you know, this ship is just a little bit of a, a riot as a gunboat. And the reason why is that main battery. So when you first get Clemson, you're going to be stuck with just the standard four inch batteries that you've been stuck with and it's in the same exact configuration as wix preceding it you have one all the way up front two amidship and one astern when you upgrade the guns after getting the second hull upgrade you get to double them that's right you go from just four guns to eight effectively doubling your dps overnight those main battery have an 8.6 kilometer range, 7 second reload, 1500 HE shell damage, 1700 AP shell damage, and they move out at uh, a pretty brisk 884 meters per second, 7% fire chance. Uh, needless to say, this thing is a monster when it comes to both burning battleships and annihilating destroyers this is really where we get our first taste of what high tier u.s destroyer gameplay is going to be like not in the dual guns but in the high rate of fire destroyer hunter role we also get upgraded torpedoes because um why not <laughs> so we have uh, the same number of torpedoes in the same configuration we have uh, four triple launchers, you have two on each side for six each side. They have 5.5 kilometers, 56 knots, so not any faster. Uh, but they do 11,733 damage, which is more. They go 5.5 kilometers. They have a much longer reload time of 66 seconds. So no longer do we have the short reload time of the 5k torps on Wix. We now have much longer reload time for those torpedoes, but they hit like a truck. They are also the same stealth factor at 1.1 kilometers. The anti-aircraft defenses have not changed at all. You've got Modus times two up front and a lone 3-inch 23 gun, except for this time it's a stern. Same DPS 13, same priority sector reinforcement value of 35%, and same firing range of 3 kilometers. Basically, it's garbage. Your speed is going to top out at 36.8 kilometers with the speed flag. If we take the speed flag off, it's a straight even 35 knots, which is pretty dang good. We also have a 520 meter turning circle radius and a 2.8 second rudder shift time, which effectively matches verbatim the, uh, well, maybe not verbatim, but it effectively matches the wicks in terms of those as well. In terms of detection range, uh, you'll notice I'm, I have a 10-point captain. Uh, I highly recommend remaining in Tier 4 until you get to that 10th point. It really doesn't take too long to do that. Once you get that 10th point and you have Concealment Expert and a camo on, you're going to have a detection range of 6.1 kilometers. Without it, it's going to jump up to about 6.7. So once again, not exactly the, the world's greatest uh, concealment, but there are far worse in my opinion, but you also have a ridiculous main battery at this tier. It's it's quite insane. 2.2 kilometer detection range by air, and then of course still two kilometers uh, assured detection range. In terms of upgrades on the ship, we've got main armaments mod one once again. That's going to be for the 20% uh, reduction in the chance of your main battery and your torpedo tubes getting knocked out. 50% uh, increase in their hit point pool and a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. The only other option in this first slot that I would consider, Magazine Mod 1, 70% chance of getting a detonation, but at these lower tiers, detonations really shouldn't be a concern. If you do get detonated, shucks. It doesn't really cost you a whole lot to get your ship back, uh, unlike at the top tiers where it costs significantly more. 
and uh, you can get those debt flags to reduce it to 0%. In the second slot, once again, running engine room uh, protection. That's 20% reduction in the chance of your engine and steering gears getting incapacitated or taken out and a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. Uh, damage control systems mod one with the chance of reducing the chance of fire and flood. If you're on fire, you're flooding, things have gone wrong. And you could, if you wanted to get the engine boost mod one, if you have that uh, available and you have to earn that. Um, I don't even know if you can get these things anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't paid that much attention to the patch notes, but in terms of overall play style, should be fairly obvious where Clemson stands with four uh, turrets with two guns apiece, eight total guns. Uh, this thing is a gunboat. You can bring six to bear at any given time. They have a 7% fire chance, a fairly quick rate of fire, good firing arcs. We have longer range torpedoes and slightly stealthier uh, ship overall compared to Wix. So we have a lot more tools at our disposal. We no longer have to get really close to use torpedoes. We can now stealth torp significantly more effectively. And we have the guns to back it up. Oh man, so what are the downsides? Well, tier four brings upon the first... Nah, Wix can see them, but it's not as common. The first time we're going to encounter carriers consistently. Uh, low tier carriers are so common and prolific, it's, it's an annoyance. It is a massive annoyance, and you have no way of dealing with them. Uh, with 13 DPS, if you shoot down an aircraft, be absolutely proud. It was probably the captain standing on the deck with the 1903 that shot him down, and not the, you know, 3A aircraft guns that you actually have. So when it comes to defending yourself, you have no protection against aircraft carriers at all spotting you, which means not only do you have to be paying more attention to what aircraft are doing to make sure that you don't yourself die due to... Uh, you know, excessive torpedo bomber or dive bomber attacks. You also have to be paying attention to what other surface ships are doing as well. So there can be a bit of a, an overload to that. However, this ship, I'm telling you, it really doesn't matter. It's agile, exactly like Wix. It has much better gunnery. It has much better torpedoes, effectively the same concealment. Like I said, it's only real downside is it is... Even with all the concealment upgrades, it's still not uber stealthy, and it has no AA. Those are its two biggest downsides, and quite honestly, I don't think it's really that big of a downside. This thing is an absolute seal clubber, even with just 10 points. It's, in, it's insane. Let's stop talking about it in port and look at it in a battle video. All right, so I want to apologize in advance on this video. For whatever reason, it's got a little bit of a stutter... Uh, every couple of seconds or so. I think it has something to do with the fact that V-Sync got enabled somehow. Apologize in advance for that. So um, it's not super noticeable, but uh, if you're looking for it, which you probably are now, you'll you'll see it. So the map is New Dawn. This is one of my favorite... Wait, is this New Dawn? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is New Dawn. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is... Uh, Again, we're we're looking at uh, this thing is a seal clever. I'm I'm just gonna say that match starts off pretty slow. We're gonna head towards the decap straight away. Uh, again, any aircraft guns we've turned them off. They're not really gonna contribute much to this game. It's it is what it is. But uh, <laughs> 13 DPS with two carriers. We're just it's not gonna happen. It's just not going to get us anywhere. Uh. With our trip to D, we are, uh, you know, we want to be cautious because it looks like we're going to be the only destroyer over here. The other destroyer, Isakaze, is running towards A uh, with our one of our battleships. <laughs> and that's it. Everybody else is headed towards D, including the two aircraft carriers. I, it, whatever. Anywho, low tier, fun tier. This match uh, is a perfect example of what happens when you get into one of those situations where the enemy gives you a flank, which is just absolutely insane. <laughs> they all crash one direction and leave a poor Karlsruhe to, uh, to fend for himself. As you can imagine, it really doesn't work. Uh, from there, we're going to head towards the middle. This isn't New Dawn, is it? No. 
Maybe it is. It's just a weird configuration of it. I don't know. Anywho, you're going to get to see quite a lot. We're going to see what our average damage roll is with these guns. Again, in the previous video we saw with the Wix, we saw two shell hits, uh, two HE shell hits, and it was about 1,000 damage, like 990 or so. So uh, pretty good uh, torpedo arc still, thanks to the way that the torpedoes are laid out. And, well, here we are. So... Mr. Karlsruhe, I butchered that, don't care, uh, he's going to come into this cap, and once again, we have five and a half kilometer torps, we want to dump them uh, in a manner in which, uh, you know, he's likely to run into them, with how s relatively slow they are, uh, by the time he gets to the, the torpedoes reach the end of their, uh, their track, it will be plenty, plenty, plenty uh, for him to run into them still. So now that, uh, you know, now, oh, 990, so it looks like same damage output for two shell hits. Maybe we can get four this time. Yeah, four shell hits, and it was like 1,700, give or take. And you can see the Carl's is going to melt. <laughs> Things, these guns are very accurate. Uh, they do do a very decent amount of damage. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move. I mean, we're spotted, but he's he's doing such, he's not, he's not having a good time right now. He definitely overextended and did not have any support, and the carrier sinks him. So we're going to cap this, and then we're going to head towards the middle area, and we are going to hang out in there for a little bit, mostly to try and stem the tide. Uh, I haven't seen either of the destroyers, which is usually a key, and that looks like they were both spotted over at A. So that's a good sign that uh, they're over there. Of course, Isakaze is not capable of effectively fending off a Clemson by itself, let alone a Clemson and another Isakaze. So, looks like, uh, <laughs> looks like, uh, the team is, teams kind of got mirrored there. But, uh, we're gonna head toward into the mi this middle section here, see if we can't head off some of these, these battleships and maybe catch a destroyer, uh, pushing further than it probably should. Now, on a map like this, again, no resistance headed towards the decap. We could make an end run to the um, to the carriers, but I really don't think that that's necessary in these lower tier matches. You know, you look at what uh, the carriers have access to in terms of aircraft, and it's really not, they're really not a threat. So Clemson taking some pretty decent damage there. I think Kaiser's kind of uh, giving it a good run for its money. Uh, the carrier, the Hosho, has hit it fairly hard with some uh, with some rocket planes, so that helps out quite a bit. But let's keep pushing. And tactically, you know, we've not been the focus of an aircraft carrier yet, but uh, I promise you this will become a massive headache soon enough. Soon enough. So Kaiser over there, tempting, but we need to keep our Kaiser alive. He's blowing his horn. We'll blow ours. We're a choo-choo boat. One more reason to like this boat. <laughs> okay, so Clemson. He's got some camo on, so he's not a complete noob. But uh, we've, we've got ourselves... Oh, yeah. You, you give me that kind of broadside, and I'm going to take advantage of that. Those two, those two shells should have hit. That's frustrating. And boom. All right, so we got ourselves a kill. 6,000 damage, and our, us slowing down definitely helped out uh, avoiding damage. Remember that tactic from the previous one. Not that I knew that those shells were incoming, but you can effectively assume that once you're spotted, you're going to be targeted by everybody. We'll try and help the Kaiser out, but, man, it's kind of pointless. <laughs> Torpedoes? A pair? I don't know if a torpedo ended up... Uh, what happened with that, but... We're gonna, we were going to be spotted anyway, regardless. Okay, so we're no longer spotted, which means that the carrier's aircraft went away, so that's good. Isakaze is somewhere, but we're going to dump torpedoes into this open area here, praying that the Kaiser comes to get them. And again, you saw that we're launching the torpedoes in a manner in which uh, he will intercept them before they run out of range. And because he's so close to the island and he's kind of pushing in here, I really want to hang around this island because one way or another we're going to catch him off guard. And I'm really not afraid of the Isakaze so long as we keep our head on a swivel, figure out where he's going. See, he's turning in here. So we'll go ahead and we'll eat some torpedoes out that way. Oop, Isakaze torps. Nice. And looks like we're going to get one on the Kaiser, maybe two. 
Okay, we got one on the Kaiser. What about the Isakaze? And Kerplunk. Yeah. Isakaze was definitely going to die. That was a big hit. 20,700 damage, two kills. And the battle is still very young. Both their destroyers are out of this match. Uh, if you remember from one of my other videos, that is an extremely important uh, accomplishment, especially for U.S. destroyers this early on. Oh man, we got 26 seconds. Uh, let, let's uh, let's play this a little bit differently. Let's wait for him to kind of expose himself around the island uh, before we push out. Okay, so taking stock of what's going on, we can see the Kuma 5.8 kilometers away. Definitely don't want to push out there. It's very tempting. Just got to remember, definitely not wanting to uh, expose myself completely unnecessarily here. So there's our torpedoes are finally up. Okay, so Kaiser's going to be turning out. You can see he's speeding up some. We'll go ahead and deploy our torpedoes. There are, yeah, in the smoke as well to try and hide ourselves. Ooh. <laughs> he tried. Good try. All right, so we got Kuma here. We're, we'll try AP. I'm not overly confident. Looks like the carrier's going to snag a torp on that. That's funny. Kuma is a relatively weak cruiser. And it doesn't look like our ape. Well, we actually overpenned. So I don't know. Maybe we could citadel it. If we got a little bit closer, we definitely could citadel There we go. 1,600 damage. I'll take that. Our torpedoes helped make that turn as well. So we'll switch back to HE. And again, we're just using our guns to our advantage. Rotate ourselves around. We know his torpedoes are coming out. There's their Hermes. Come on. <laughs> so we got a Wyoming over here, too. I don't know if that he's going to survive that. So we got to, we've got decisions to make. We can either continue to play around. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll play around here a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll make a run for the Hosho Hermes Gungut. I don't think you know, Gungut's going to be kind of a tough nut to crack, but we'll go ahead over that way. Again, we've got such good guns. I mean, once the ship is in range, there's really no reason not to continue to attack it. we got to pay attention to what Gongut is doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pay attention to what Gongut is doing here. So he's heading towards us. Ooh, yep, a little wiggle there to avoid the uh, dive bombers. So when a, a battleship is headed towards you, it's a little bit harder to engage them with torpedoes. It's not possible. So here we go. We're wiggling ourselves side to side. Uh, trying to get ourselves lined up, and maybe we can ram... Oop, and there's the dive bombers again. Maybe we'll be able to ram a set of torpedoes down the, the Gongut's uh, gullet here. And... Nope. First set looks like it's going to miss. So we've got him on fire again. He's he's taking out our engines here, but... We're going to keep working this. You know, we're under, we've got basically no threat aside from his secondaries, and we're on a really good attack profile for this, so... Yeet those down his throat. And that's going to be a confirmed kill. Okay, so we're at three kills, 40,000 damage. And we have a carrier right here. So let's let's keep the push up. You know, we're, we're about to win this. Hosho dumping torps. Turn, baby, turn. Nice. You got to see those torpedoes when they start to make that run in. You really got to be paying attention and preempt those turns as best you possibly can. Okay, so how are we doing on torpedoes? We're just going to keep working our angles here. And once again, we avoided another set. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot for you. <laughs> oh, man, we're just going to keep shooting at him. I mean... And down goes another carrier. And then the match ends. So as you can see, we, we were playing pretty aggressively there. But overall, not a huge change. Just, you've got guns. Don't be afraid to use them. A really quite good game for this this PR. <laughs> this tier. Uh, they get better. <laughs> this, was, this took no effort. This is the first game in Clemson after not having played it in four years. Anyway, I'm Whiskey11. I'm signing us out of the gaming lounge. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.